it's Sam back with another iOS 10 screencast. In a previous screencast I took a look at using Xcode extensions to provide custom source editor functionality. In today's screencast I'm going to explore these extensions a little bit further through introducing dynamic commands. I've already got a macOS app called Askify that includes an Xcode 8 editor extension. Currently this allows you to select text within Xcode and then Askify it turning it into ASCII art text. My app's got the functionality to provide lots of different fonts, all of which are loaded dynamically at runtime. Today I'm going to add that dynamic functionality to the Xcode plugin. Rather than just saying ASCII comment, I'll be able to choose which font I'd like to use when I'm ASCIIing it. First up, I need to update the extension class so that it provides the list of commands rather than the info p list. Inside the Askify extension class, I'm going to override the command definitions property. This is a property that returns an array of dictionaries, each of which specifies a different command. I want all of my commands to use the same Askify command class, so I'm going to pull out that name using the class name property. Then I'm going to find out what the current bundle identifier is, and I'll use this to construct different identifiers for each of the commands associated with a separate font. I get the bundle identifier by getting the current bundle using bundle for type of self, and then just using the bundle identifier property. Figlet renderer has a static property called top fonts which returns an array of strings of the names of the fonts. I'm going to map each of those names into the dictionary required to specify a command. First I'm going to build the identifier for the command by joining the bundle identifier and the font name with a full stop. Then I can create the dictionary. It has three required keys in the same way that a command definition within the info p list has three as well. First up is the name. This is what will appear in the menu itself. We're just going to call that font and then give the font name. Then I need to specify the class name for the command, which is class name, we work that out at the top. And then finally we provide the identifier. If I build and run, open up Xcode and then check out the editor menu, I can see the Askify comment options are now dynamically generated from the list of fonts. Now I've got my list of commands appearing within the editor menu, I now need to provide the functionality for them. Since I chose that all of my editor commands would use the same command class, all I need to do is extract the font name from the command identifier and pass it off to the figlet renderer to provide the correct rendering of the font. I'm going to start by adding a utility method to the Askify command class. This will take a command identifier string and convert it into a font name. First up, I'm going to find out what the bundle identifier is using bundle for type of self dot bundle identifier as I did in the Askify extension class. I'm going to separate that into an array of strings using the separated by and specifying a full stop. I'll then do the same again with the command that the function was passed. The command should have one more element than the bundle identifier, which represents the font name. If that's the case, then we'll return that final element as the font name. Otherwise, I'll escape by providing the standard font name. Now jumping up to the perform with invocation completion handler method, I'm going to extract the specified font using this new utility method. Let selected font equal font from invocation dot command identifier. And then finally, I can go into the figlet render and add the with font selected font argument. Then build and run selecting Xcode, open up my playground, I select some text, go into an editor, select Askify comment and choose a font and you can see that it generates it in the right way. I'll then try it again with a different font and see that it does indeed use different fonts for different commands. When replacing text within an editor, it would be far better user experience for the inserted text to be selected. Since selections is just a property on the buffer that you're passed from Xcode in your extension, it's really simple for me to add each of my inserted text box to the selections array so that when my extension is finished, the newly inserted text will appear selected. I'm going to create an array that will hold the different selections inside the perform with invocation method. Let's ignore the fact that it says let and pretend it says var, which it will do momentarily. Each time I produce some Askified text, I want it to be selected when we return to Xcode. To do that, inside the loop, I'm going to create some XC source text range objects that select the newly inserted text. Each of those takes a start and an end, each of which is in turn an XC source text position taking a line and a column. I'm going to start at the beginning of the start line at column 0 and end at the end line also at column 0. I then append that to the new selections array. I can then replace the existing selection code to use the new array that we've generated as we've looped through the selections. Finally, I can build and run, start up Xcode, select some text, Askify it using one of the fonts, and here you see that it does indeed select the inserted Askify text. 
And with that, I'm spent. You've now got all of the tools that you need to go and build your own source code editor extensions within your macOS apps. It's a shame at this stage that the functionality is severely limited to just the text buffer. And that also, in betas 5 and 6, these were an absolute nightmare to get working. I really hope that you have more luck than I did when you start building your own source code extensions. Thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you again on another iOS 10 screencast. Cheerio, bye.